Mass for You at Home is proudly supported by Catholic Mission. Be the difference in someone's life today. Phone 1-800-257-296 or visit catholicmission.org.au. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome everyone to this, our Mass for Pentecost. As we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's do so calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to proclaim the good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are the shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we cry out, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages, and the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya round Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the the Lord my soul, Lord God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. Lord, send out your 
spirit and renew the face of the earth. How many are your works, O oh Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. your spirit and renew the face of the earth a reading from the first letter of saint paul to the corinthians no one can say jesus is lord unless he is under the influence of the holy spirit there is a variety of gifts but always the same spirit there are all sorts of service to be done but always to the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because all of these parts, though many, make up one body. So it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptized, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one spirit was given to us all to drink. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Spirit, Lord of light, from the clear celestial height, thy pure beaming radiance give. Come thou father of the poor, come with treasures which endure, Come, thou light of all that live. Thou of all consolers best, thou the soul's delightful guest, dost refreshing peace bestow. Thou in toil art comfort sweet, pleasant coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. Light immortal, light divine, visit thou these hearts of thine, in our inmost being fill. If thou take thy grace away, nothing pure in man will stay. All his good is turned to ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour thy dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. Thou on us who evermore thee confess and thee adore, with thy sevenfold gifts descend. Give us comfort when we die, give us life with thee on high, give us joys that never end. of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most people know the name Helen Keller. But how many remember the name Annie Sullivan? Annie Sullivan was the woman who taught Helen how to communicate. It was Annie who broke through the barrier that had isolated Helen from the world. Annie found a language that Helen can understand. 
When we hear the first reading of today's liturgy and how people were surprised to understand the disciples proclaiming the message in a language they could understand, our thoughts go automatically to the spoken word. It is the natural human response of most people that language is spoken or written because that's, that's how the world operates. It's the world in which we dwell. The very word language evokes this meaning for most of us. But language actually takes many forms. The deaf community in Australia do not sign in English. They have their own language, Auslan, that can be translated into English, that we understand, but it has its own structure and its own methods. Language comes in many other forms, body language or tone of voice. Something said in jest and received as such may be heard and received by another as sarcasm or insult. Simple gestures like touching the hand of someone grieving or pulling away from another person can convey much more than an hour's chatter. What happened on that Pentecost day we will never really know. Luke's account of the event is a way of putting into written language things too difficult to explain, just as Jesus used parables when he was preaching. What matters is that people began not just to hear about the risen Christ, but to actually experience him in their own language, not necessarily spoken, but in the sincerity of those telling the good news. At the end of this Eucharist, we are sent, driven out by the Spirit, to proclaim the good news. And for that news to be understood and received, it must first be spoken in a form that can be understood by those to whom it is proclaimed. The infant will receive the good news in ways that they don't even understand. The child or teenager it is proclaimed by words, by things, by the ability to stand with them and assuring them of their worth. To the bully, it is proclaimed by words of challenge. But whatever means the good news, it will always be better proclaimed by actions. It will always be comprehended by others because it is spoken in a language they understand, the language of acceptance, compassion, and respect. If the good news is not being received as it was on Pentecost, it's never the failure of the hearers. It's our failure. It's our failure to proclaim it in ways that people will understand, in what we do and what we say. People joined the disciples not because they were great linguists, but because of the authentic life of those who proclaimed the message. They joined because they experienced their own Annie Sullivan, who spoke the word in a language that meant something to them. We, driven, anointed and afire with the Spirit, are to be like Annie Sullivan to those we meet. We are to be disciples proclaiming good news. And so we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, renewed by the promise of the Spirit, let us ask God to hear our prayers for those in need. 
that those who hunger for spiritual meaning will have their hearts opened by the spirit of wisdom and understanding. In the spirit we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians will work to become one in the body of Christ. In the spirit we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will be comforted by Christ's peace. In the spirit we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of glory, you have fashioned the world with your creative spirit. Hear our prayers and continue to pour forth your abundant gifts as we conclude this festival of the resurrection. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you had made your adopted children by uniting them with your only begotten Son. This same spirit, as the church became, came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Looking at the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's greet each other with peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, you who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Thanks for being with us for Pentecost, and we wish you every blessing of the day. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.